Okay, so welcome back then, part two on working out your static compression ratio. Here with Steve. Hi. And you're going to run through the maths again. Oh, unfortunately. Yeah, okay. So this time, what are we going to look at? Head gaskets first, and then we'll look at the deck clearance. Okay, so first we'll look at head gasket, BK450 to start with. And we're going to work out what the volume is within the gasket. Nice and easy, but what you've got to appreciate first, don't take a brand new gasket and check the thickness. You really need to be checking a used gasket. And Why is that, Steve? Well, obviously, a used one has been compressed, so it'll be thinner, yep. so it has less volume. And he's crushed down a fair amount. Yep. I mean, we'll just do a quick calculation. There's a crushed one. One millimetre, exactly. Or 40,000. 40,000. Old language. Yep. This one. So a brand new one. 1.08 millimetres. So what we'll do is we'll take the area of a circle again, which is pi r squared. So 73.5 bore divided by 2, 36.75. Now we've got to times that by itself, which is the radius squared. So 36.75 multiplied by 36.75, then multiplied by pi, which is the 3.142. That will give you the area of the circle, which will be 4243. Now, okay. to give the actual cc, you've got to divide that by 1,000. So a BK450 will be 4243 divided by 1,000, which is 4.243 cc. 4.2 is close enough. And that's the extra height that the head gasket gives you. That's the extra cc that this is giving. Exactly. Now you said that's 73.5 bore average. If you measure these, they're not always round, are they? No, they're definitely not. What you want to do is measure it across nine o'clock, three o'clock, measure it across 12 o'clock, six o'clock, add the two together, divide by two. That will give you the average diameter. Okay, so that's that one. Then we've got two more gaskets here to look at. We've got uh, 73.5 kinetic steel yes. shim, so three layer. Uh, and then same thing. But 72 millimeter so up to your plus 60 bore plus 60 yeah so 1330 and that makes a difference as well again so. slightly very okay. slightly right let's run through the maths then now the difference with these is 40 thou or one millimeter on this one these are only 30 thou or 0.75 of a millimeter so you're working on the same 73.5 on this one divide by 2 36.75 multiply it by itself 36.75, multiply again by the 3.142, which is your pi, which will give you the same actual area as this one, which is 4243, divide it by 1,000, 4.243, but you're only gonna multiply this one then by 0.75, because it's only three quarters of a millimeter thick. So this one will actually work out at 4243 multiplied by 0.75, which actually equates to 3.15 cc. So you can see the difference now. We've lost over a cc just, just by using gasket. a thinner head gasket. It's quite a common mistake as well with these because they look thicker, don't they? If you they look do. at that, because it's got the three layers on yes. there, but actually if you measure it across, it is... 0.25 millimeters. On a compressed one, they do compress to 30 thou or 0.75 of a millimeter. You can get these in different thicknesses, but we only we keep the 30 thou one across the range. Yes. So there you go. Um, and then if you go to this size, which is okay. a bit smaller, this one is a 72.2 bore size. So 72.2 divided by 2, 36.1. Multiply the 36.1 by the 36.1 multiply that by the 3.142 will give you 4095 divided by a thousand which is 4.095 multiply that by 0 0.75 because it's only the three quarters of the how three quarters of a millimeter thick yep will give you 3.01 cc so quite a difference isn't there yeah 4.2 3.15 3.01. So there's your head gasket calculations. You've got your BK450, Cometics. Don't forget, 40 thou one millimetre, 30 thou 0.75 millimetre. 
Okay, so we're almost there then with the maths on mm -hmm. the block side of things. Yep. And the next one to look at is the debt clearance. Yep. So what's that? Okay, your debt clearance is what we class as the dimension between the crown of the piston when it's on TDC to the top of the cylinder block. So in standard form, when Rover made the engines, the piston to block clearance on the standard 1225 GT engine was 40 thou, one millimeter. Roughly. Roughly, depending <laughs> on what pistons they were fitting at and what time. The day of the week as yeah. well, probably. <laughs> okay. So this bit's a little bit more involved than what we've been doing here already. Mm -hmm. How do you go about measuring that? Okay, first thing you want to do is build your short motor, block crank rods and pistons. Once you've got the block crank rods and pistons assembled, you need to make sure that number one piston is at TDC. So, dial gauge on the top of the block with the plunger on the piston, wind it over until the piston comes to its highest point, TDC. Okay, so then what you need to do is with a dial gauge or micrometer, depth micrometer or vernier gauge, you're going to measure from the top of the block to the top of the piston but you're not going to do it once, you're going to do it twice, and you're going to measure it just above the gudgeon pin on the left and right side. The reason we're going to do this is because the Mini runs a swan neck rod. Sometimes as the piston comes up, it can literally twist slightly in the bore, so you might get an uneven reading unless you do it from both sides. So reading from the left, reading from the right, add the two figures together, divide by two will give you a datum. And that'll give you a depth of how far down the pistons sit in from the top of the block. Okay. It can vary, can't it, from bore to bore? It can vary from bore to bore, and this can be created by another problem, which is called stroke. On rover crankshafts, they're mass produced, and you will find each pin, big end, can give you a different stroke. So if you were to measure all the heights on a standard piston assembly, with a standard crank and standard rods, the worst I've ever seen is eight thou variation from best to worst. So that's going to make a fair difference to your well, you compression ratio calculations you won't get as well, it right because you can't machine things to make it right. The only thing you can do to make it right is to have the crankshaft ground by an operation called stroke correcting, and then when you put it back together, you will find each dimension will be correct. Can you have some variety in the block as well? It's not all the crank, is it? Well, yeah, I mean, there's many things. You could have the main bearings bored in slightly on the twist. You could have the top face machined slightly on the twist. There's a million and one things. Is it all over? If you get to that point and there's a massive variety between one bore and the other, what do you do at that point? Well, machining is the only option. Okay. Like so I say, with a steel crank, you'll know that the strokes are perfect. Yep. With steel rods, you'll know that the centers are perfect, and with the forged Amigas or the die-cast Amigas, they will be perfect. So you know then it's going to be within the cylinder block where the error is. It's one of those things where you're building a race engine, you want absolutely everything to be everything right. Correct. If you get to this point and it's a more budget oriented engine, then you might decide this for the small difference that it makes. Where do you draw the line? On exactly. a race engine, it's got to be right. On a budget engine, you can get away with a little bit, but it depends how much money you want to spend. Okay, so we're going to do the same calculations again here for the bore size. Yep. So if you look back to part one, you'll see basically working out the volume of the circle. You need to do that and then times it by the bore size, by the depth. By the depth. So basically, we'll quickly run through it. Imagine it's a 1380 bore size, 73.5, divide by two, which gives us 36.75, multiply by 36.75, multiply by by the pi r squared, 3.142. That will give you your 4243. To get it into CC, you multiply, divide that by 1000. So 4.2 CC per millimeter down the bore from the crown of the piston. So if you've only got it 20 thou down the bore or half a millimeter, it will be 2.1 CC. Good stuff, okay, so that's part two. Come back next week for part three, where we're going to look at the final stage, which is going to be looking at the cylinder head. Mm -hmm. And that's normally where most of the adjustment happens. Exactly. And then we'll put all the numbers together, give some recommendations on what we would say is a good place to start mm -hmm. with this and go from there. So thanks very much for watching. Thanks, Steve, for your maths. You're welcome. As always.
And if you liked the video, please make sure to subscribe and click the little bell icon and you'll get notifications on your phone when we do the next video.